what has really attracted people to the crowd appears to be simplicity and convenience. It's been the driver rather than the abstract economics that drives it. In IT, we were sort of held hostage by, uh, by having to drive costs down. You had to make very long contracts with single providers. And as such, the providers were in charge, not the, not the buyers of the technology. I see it's much more about transforming businesses hmm. than it is about transforming IT. All this stuff is powered by cloud. And, um, and in the enterprise, it is obvious that they can move much faster now than that they could before. The cloud will become the place where if you want to compute securely and, and protect the privacy of your customers, that will be the place where you will do it, not on-premise. Before we used to think, I need the infrastructure, then I put my stuff on it. So you had a planning phase and then you would put your stuff on it and you better not make a mistake. Uh, this has been so. totally changed. Hardware has become software. So from the perspective of application developer or engineer is that you just have a, a function that you call that says create computer and he takes care of it. It allows you to fail in different ways to start again to do 15 different versions at virtually no cost. I think it's very easy for me to trust uh, Dropbox today. It's very easy for me to trust Google today because they have no interest in sharing my data. I mean, today it's fine. The, the problem is what happened in 15 years. What if Google goes rogue? Over time, there could be one big provider, there could be like five big providers, but the interfaces that they're providing will likely probably normalize to be the same thing. A lot of things are obviously moving to the public cloud, but I think if you're in high frequency finance, for example, right, you're usually relying on very specialized hardware. These sort of applications I don't see moving in the cloud anytime soon. We probably would agree that a lot of the models that are that are built in order to drive those decisions are being processed in the cloud. There's certainly space or room for a lot more private data centers. There will be a very long period, I think definitely where you have established enterprises with large IT shops that will have a hybrid model. You know, they'll move more and more things over into the cloud. Don't get confused by public cloud, private cloud terms. If you want to scale up, who pays? If you want to scale down, who pays? If you take the capacity risk both times, then you're not using an infrastructure provider. It's just easier for you know, the centralized providers to build up that kind of spe uh, expertise than it is for everybody out there to kind of go and do it themselves. We thought we would make money on hardware and we could get software and services for free. Today, someone like IBM makes money because of Linux rather than with Linux. We are not able to evolve the industry as fast as the customer. As long as that is the case, we have a lot of work to do because the customer will seek to find what they would like standardized and taken out of the way. And if we don't make it simple and convenient, they just won't use it. I still see a very close relationship between, let's say, sort of the big data processing and cloud itself. Okay. You collect as much data as you want to. You don't have an idea about what the data model is going to be, or you're going to try different ones on top of that. And then iteratively, you use computational power to go look for the pot of gold. In 10 years from now, it'll be so patently obvious that how would I not want to store every memory that I've taken with either my phone, my tablet, or my Google Glass, or whatever be the case? Like, it'll just be so obvious. When cloud meets right. big data, right, I will remain forever excited.